All right, we are live shooting the shiz with DK and the swag. I got the big man next to me, the 03 Kemper Kill Leatherface, Brett Wagner. Good to see you. I just got off a fire weekend. He just got <clears> off a, I don't know what you did this weekend. I was so busy, my brain doesn't absorb things. So you I was like in uh, I was in Beaumont, Texas for Bad Boy Mowers and my buddy uh, Lewis's Yazoo, who's one of our big dealers for the lawnmower company. And Connor, I've been the voice of a lawnmower company for 21 years. So Yeah, yeah, I kind of I heard that. I've never seen yeah. a bad boy's mower rig today and in town. I saw oh. one driving by. I wanted to get my phone so I could take a picture for you. A beautiful looking uh, trailer they had. So uh, well, you know, the company's fancy, fancy. Com companies popping out a billion dollars with the lawnmowers a year. So it's uh, it's doing pretty good. But ladies and gentlemen, uh, yeah, John was kicking ass. We'll have, probably have to do a separate show and talk about all the cool stuff he did. But I just wanted to make sure that tonight we got a couple people we've never had on the show. And we got some guys that are going to come on the second half hour who are running a, a brand new uh, haunt uh, convention. And we got the man right here who I've... Uh, We've never met in person, right? I don't think so. The one no, con we we're supposed to person. do got canceled. But we that's right. Oh gosh. That's <laughs> right. Uh Midwest <laughs> Monster Fest. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, somebody uh, just came out today. Uh, we won't get into much too much, but yeah, we won't. But uh, <laughs> but Connor, um Creepy Customs, he is the owner and operator of Creepy Customs, uh vintage and handmade costumes and prop replicas specializing in movie accurate. Yeah, sure, give me that thing. Give me the creepy customs thing again. The, the, the tag slowly sliding the up. The tag slowly, yes. And uh, yeah, the superior, is that, what is that, 70 what? That's a 78. Yeah, 78 suit, yeah. So, gosh, not a lot of people, I mean, we, we know a lot of the same guys. Um, yeah. I, uh, I came across you because I needed to, uh, I, you know, I was starting to do conventions again after so many years, I've never doing it. And, uh, uh, Jordan DeForic, um, you know, horror school customs and they needed to get, um, a costume and I needed to get a mask and, and then, you know, you're, you're, you're friends with all these guys and every, all, you know, go, Oh, you know, with Connor Patrick, Connor Patrick. And, but Man, over the last couple of years, my friend, you are totally stepping up to the plate. Creepy thank you, customs thank you. is all over the place. And why I wanted to bring you on is because uh, Horror Hound, which is a top five convention in the world, folks. I'm, I mean, I'm just bottom line. I'm telling you, it's a top five in the world. And um, I've gotten to sign there before. Crazy place, madhouse. And, uh, you know, here's some of the sponsors this year. It was Trick or Treat Studios, Terror Threads, Fright Rags, uh, Tyrant Toys. And then there was Creepy Customs, mm -hmm. a sponsoring, you know, like one of the cool sponsors. Of, mm -hmm. I'm like, you know, that just doesn't happen by accident. And Nathan and all the folks at Horhan are not just going to bring anybody in just to make a dollar because they don't have to. I'm sure there's thousands of people that would love to put their name attached to that. So. Connor Patrick and Creepy Customs, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate the praise, my friend. Yeah, it's been, a, a, it's been a, it's a an eventful deal. couple of years, you know. Uh, we're only doing three big conventions now, H45 and Horror Hound. You know, I can't I can't complain. You know, I'm blessed. You are blessed. Let's talk about how you honor to me. You refer to that? Me. We did something with uh, some Leatherface shirts. Or a we did. Shirt. We did. We'll get into that. Yeah, we'll we'll talk about that. But I got Connor, one over there. I got one over about, there. That's right. How did you? What made you want to get into this 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 business? And um, when you're growing up, obviously you had to be a Halloween fan. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, big horror fan. You know, first R-rated movie I ever saw was Halloween. Um, followed by you know going to the the rental store and getting all the classics texas chainsaw nightmare on elm street and i was just like a big franchise horror fan and i still am you know uh and then just ball kept rolling uh wanted to make some costumes and i realized there's nothing ac accurate out there you know uh so i started grabbing all these vintage uh coveralls and modifying them myself and i kind of got the ball rolling uh people started talking about it 
start selling them. And then eventually I just had a crazy long wait list. And I was like, maybe I can do this full time and create these from the ground up to be 100% accurate. But and that's led are, into the, the, the other franchises, Texas Chainsaw and Friday the 13th now. Yeah, you. but you are a collector. If you look behind you, we can see a lot of stuff that's... Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a little upset because I I got a stove, a dishwasher, and a refrigerator behind me. It's it's just so uncomfortable. And this man showcasing all that badass behind me. Man, I got I got Freddy. I got a silicone Freddy right next to me. Oof. This this is all around this room. Yeah, I'm a I'm a hardcore collector. And the nice thing about it is like I create things people want, and then they have stuff I want. So we do a lot of trades too. That's how I've gotten a lot of really cool stuff is through trades of other collectors. Can I ask you a question? Something other mask makers that I've dealt with, they never collect their own stuff. They always collect other people's stuff. Is are you, is that the case with you? Yeah. I mean, I have, you know, probably close to a thousand costumes in this house. And I, other than the one I just got finished by the, uh, the FX artists who made them for the new trilogy, I just got to cover all. I don't own any of my own work. Like uh, I usually I'll do one up to wear and then I'll probably, you know, Fill a, fill an order with it. You talking Chris Nelson? Uh, so no, Chris Nelson made the masks for the films. The uh, the coveralls were uh, oh. weathered by this this woman, uh, April Trakina, or and then uh, Emily Gunchor ran the department. So um, April, we became friends, and she actually finished a pair of coveralls for like in my size for me. That's wow. like the first first one a collector uh, she's done since like since the movies filmed, like wrapped, you know. Uh, so yeah, she did mine and she actually reached out to me. She saw my coveralls and she asked me to credit her as the original designer of that in my posts. She says that they were like uncanny if she thought they were like hers. I might need some coveralls now. I, I think I'm getting towards Michael Myers shape where I can pull it off without the old in the way. Well, I mean, you could always do a Halloween six, you know, he was a, he was a, he had a belly in that movie. Well, I, I'm working on it. I'd like to be ready for Halloween, but you know, I won't see some H six cast, so maybe I'll put some on just to dress like H six. There you go. There you go. I'll do that one up for you for free. What was uh, was the seventy eight the original? Your first uh, foray into getting making a costume or making some coveralls? Yeah, um, that's just like my favorite movie of all time. I honestly think that's a perfect film. Uh, and that's the one everyone wanted to do. And there was no new trilogy when I started doing these. Uh, so that's the one everyone wanted, but no one could find. Um, and then it was a officially like identified 2015, 2016 era. And uh, I was like, now I know exactly what it looks like, what, what it is. I know the cover all. So now I got to find one. And just, it took forever to find it. Years, years, years. And then when I finally found it, I was like, now it's game time. Now it's time to deconstruct and then reconstruct these from the ground up for modern day sizes and for collectors. Yeah. I mean, because the bottom line is, and even uh, when I was getting my costume done, you know, there's only so many of those Catalina shirts, right? I and, can't and find one. You can't find them. And if you do find them, someone thinks they're worth a gazillion dollars, right? Someone offered me one for 600 bucks. And I was like, Hmm, and I'm like, uh, what size is it? He's like a three XL. And I'm like, well, I'm not going to spend six hundred dollars on something that doesn't fit me. So you have found a way for a niche because obviously the Michael Myers, the Jason, and the Leatherface are probably the three biggest yeah. costumes that people with cosplay uh, want right now. Yeah, hundred percent. And uh, yeah, so I essentially recreated the. Uh, you know, the Brett shirt, the the Tommy's Catalina, solely based on like photos and measurements. I, like people that had the shirts won't sell them. And I couldn't find one to completely, you know, deconstruct. So uh, we went through like three different co green colors until we finally found like the closest shade possible. Um, and it's just, yeah, just recreating it as true as possible as we could, you know. And we had to print it because you can't, to, hand sew like all the the, the stripes into it essentially uh i'd have to make like five thousand shirts at a time you know to yeah, hand sew so, i mean it must have so i remember when you were going on this journey and we were talking about it it must you had to go find a factory 
So how yeah. tough or how tough was that to find somebody that you actually hey listen I want you to recreate this and and f- and find someone that's good at it. Yeah, that was that's a, that was pretty tough. Like I have I have two factories that I've worked with um all over the world actually. There's one in Europe and one in Asia. Uh and it was definitely tough to like put relay what we're trying to do you know we're trying to make a niche item you know we're not going to sell a hundred thousand of them we're going to sell maybe a thousand of them eventually you know uh and a lot of people don't want to touch custom design stuff unless it's big big orders uh and so i found a, a lady who has just been really just wonderful she's great uh with like troubleshooting like if we can't hand stitch the stripes in let's find a fabric we can print the stripes on and just uh and that's what we ended up doing you know yeah, by the so way it, the shirt the shirts are amazing i mean it's it's uh it's tough for me to remember since i was only there for a couple of days you know uh filming myself when i got hurt but it's tough for me to remember the outfit because when you're putting that stuff on and you're filming, you're all jazzed up. I got to kill somebody. I don't care what the costume looks like as long as it looks good. And but then when you, when you watch the movie and then you see some people, like I believe, uh, Jordan horror school customs, he had a, a original shirt, the Catalina shirts. And when you look at that and then you look at yours, I mean, it's uncanny. It's, it's the closest thing. Yeah, it, it, I mean, it's actually now it's the only thing you're going to be able to get because you can't find a Catalina. And like I said, if someone has one, they think it's worth eight hundred dollars or a thousand bucks. So what you have now is you have a creepy custom. And John, not only, not only does he make the shirts, but he will also spend the painstakingly hard time of uh, of uh, weathering them for you. Yeah, making them dis- disgusting. He did that for us, did a great job. Those shirts on those busts that Vinny Cucurato did for us. I only got one left, and it was almost gone. People were all over over it, but I really want to save it for when me and Brett get together, even though we'll probably do more. So we got that bust there for Brett to sign, and somebody got it. That'd be awesome. Because right I'm now, really, I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying doing, like, the bloodier versions. People have been requesting the, the heavy blood ones, and – that's a that's a fun one that really like the contrast of the reds and the greens it's so cool yeah i got a bloody one we uh i remember you sent me one and you're like ah send it back because <laughs> he's like i want to i want to i want to do a, i want to be a bloody bloody one so we, we got it we did a nice bloody one it it it's different it's different than 90 well it's different than 99 percent of folks out there that have and uh it looks great uh the blood on it in fact uh a couple of these guys who do have your shirts that are in our chat room now, and they're all like, God, I got to get mine bloody now. I, uh, yeah, Travis Coon's got a shirt, by the way. Travis Coon has got one. Um, yeah, a, big, a, big support. Travis, a big shout out. He helped me out all weekend in Chicago, killed it, hanging out with Dan Murner and Bill D. Russell. So thanks again, Travis. Thanks for you being here. Good to see you, brother. Uh, Connor, you've you've worked with some other folks besides me, well, well before me. Let's talk about some of these other actors, uh, especially. Uh, let's talk about Tyler May. Um, so actually, I haven't done a suit specifically for Tyler Maine. I had one okay. re- ready for him for age forty-five, but he ended up doing like a fundraiser and donating everything that he wore. So he ended up getting like a store brought store bought um, suit. But uh, I did get a suit with Doug Tate. Ah, that's who I, okay, very nice. <clears throat> yeah, so uh, I followed Doug on Instagram and he uh, he started seeing like people sharing like masks and he was like liking all the, interacting with the fans or whatever. Um, and then he f- found me and he was like, hey man, you know, I'd love to get one for outside of the movies and for like appearances and stuff. And he had one for a, a big convention. He was going to do a costume op and then he was told that they weren't allowing him to promote the movie uh, at that time. So now he's gonna he's gonna be able to start wearing it in public. Well, yes, so uh, our our dude Doug, I, I, he dresses up as uh, Jason a lot. Did you happen to do his Jason or no? No, no. I think he's had that for quite some time. Uh, I don't. I wouldn't be surprised if any of that stuff is like possibly Ooh. has some lineage to the film. 
is. It looks really good. He's got the Freddy head. I'm pretty sure it's the one from the movie that he. Did. Yeah, I, saying, I think he has some stuff. <laughs> yeah, one of the good guys out there. One of the really really cool guys, and I'm glad. Yeah, that he's great. Yeah, oh, he's awesome. He's gonna be in Iowa uh, this coming October for a convention. I I, I live in Iowa, you know, small town guy. Oh. Um, but yeah, he's gonna be in Iowa for a uh, an appearance at a haunted house, and so. I'm gonna hopefully, you know, give him a, a new one of my new replicas in person. So that would be sick. That'd be sick. Iowa in, in October, so that would be uh, that would be the guys that do. Uh, gosh, I'm gonna. Gosh, I was there last year, and I'm just having a brain fart. Right, I sent you, John. I sent you a beanie. Oh, the ones that you sent me that that beanie with the red lettering. I in love Nebra that. Nebraska yeah. and Iowa. They do a sh they do a thing in uh, in in Nebraska, and they also do one in Iowa. I'll think of it yeah. before we get out of here. Omaha is like right there. Omaha and like I think what is it, Sioux Falls, Sioux Falls. Yeah, yeah, yeah Sioux Falls, Iowa. the I'm west side. No. Oh. Hey, there's a lot of a lot of famous folks coming out of Iowa. I mean, you know, let's bottom line is, you know, Aquaman spent a big majority of his life in Iowa. And Superman and Frodo Baggins. That's right. And uh, you know, we're talking um Is it gosh, my Iowa, Iowa Event Center where this is at? I'm just looking up for my own. I think it's it no, it's like, at a haunt. It's at the Hillsides Haunt. Um, that, that sounds right, right actually. Yeah. Like three up. Uh, like 200 miles away. I might have Hillside. To gosh, I don't even know. Hard. I'm having a, a brain fart on this because I did their convention. Well, if it's oh, Iowa, well, anyways, let's look at that beautiful bad boy. Yeah, I saw one over on the couch. So I was like, I'm gonna go oh, grab oh. it. I gotta so button that, it up. This is yeah, actually is, the prototype. This is when we found the correct color. So there's actually no tag on this one. Ooh. Look at that bad boy shit. Awesome. Yeah, that's beautiful. It's a, it's great. And he did he's very nice and Connor is uh, is one of the good guys and he was so nice to put a little tag in there. It says uh oh, slather face approved. The blood the blood splattered one. Yeah, so I mean I appreciate it. look at let's talk about give us uh, give the folks at home a heads up on all the stuff you do and what you might be coming okay. up. I mean Gotcha. Um, so I will. Uh, I have replica uh, coveralls of the the screen use coveralls for literally every Halloween film. If I don't have the replicas, I have the screen use brands. Um, so and then I do Corey stuff from the Halloween ends. Uh, and then Friday the Thirteenth, I have the remake two thousand nine two part coat. And then I also have the the super hard to find flannel from part two, uh, just lost to history, weird design. I, so I did that one shortly after the Texas Chainsaw shirt. Um, then for the Texas Chainsaw, I did the the 03 remake, Tommy's Catalina. Uh, and then I actually did a prototype of the pretty woman costume. I've only done one of those so far from the original. And I did like, you know, the crushed velvet blazer like a navy blue and i did the tie um so i did one prototype of that kind of testing the waters that's a little bit pricier of a build so i'll probably wait until uh there's like a, a new movie coming out or something like that and i'll you know maybe drop that um and then i also am working on here's a prototype i just got in the mail yesterday a thanksgiving oh. hat yeah yes the pilgrim hat. So I've been slowly sh shaping this one, you know, bringing it down, curling the, the sides. That's going to got a pilgrim yeah, hat we'll check out in there. the works. Good. Now, we got a couple, uh, what, what, what where's, where are you going to be next? As far as there, if, as I far as conventions, conventions, I have June, I think eighth and ninth, uh, smoky mountain terror in Kingsport, Tennessee. Great, then, great, great show! You're gonna, I you're heard, gonna love it, and they have I a heard huge blossoming event year. too. Um, and then I have flashback weekend in Chicago. I'll Are see you gonna you be there. there? Oh, right. Right. I yeah, my man. Um, I never hear back from those guys. So flashback weekend. Flashback weekend. Yep, I have a spot there. Uh, and then I'm doing Monster Mania Con in Oaks, Pennsylvania, so Philly area, um, in November. 
I want to do Scarefest, but I haven't heard back yet. If Scarefest wants to reach out, I have a bunch of buddies doing that show. And they're all going to get a big house together. And I would like to join in. Well, John right there knows uh, the two big players, the big players that are very nice that run that con. And maybe he can put in a good word. And I know they sell out those vendors so fast, but even if. Yeah, I mean, that's that's essentially what happened is that I'm on the short list, you know, uh, for a spot if it opens up. Yeah, but, yeah. Least, yeah, get you. Yeah. I I definitely put in a good word for you. Yeah. Appreciate well, Brandon it. and Adrian, Connor is a, a hard working, honest, hustling guy. He hustles. He's done really good for himself. He's created something. He created a really good niche in a market that needed something like this. And uh, we're excited to see what comes next for you. Now, I, I think, and I know we've talked about it. We definitely want to do a couple of shows together. I know we I would love that, man. Want, we wanted to see if we could get you to, uh, Motor City Nightmares up there, and, yeah, and there's a couple cool other one. shows. Creep IE, cool we got to get you at Creep IE next year, February. I would in, love in that California. one. Get out of get out of Iowa for the winter sounds really nice. It gets yes. it, it, it gets pretty miserable here. Yeah, but you can go to Des Moines and you can see the largest yeah. butter cow and uh, all yeah, that other good God. stuff. You know. <laughs> I, I love I love I love Iowa and I love and I love I love Iowa. I've been going now for for twenty odd years and uh, it's, it's doing actually, appearances. I traveled, you know, before I was doing creepy customs full time. I was uh, painting buildings all over the country and a little bit overseas. And uh, so I traveled. I saw like all the big you know metropolises in the in in the country. I would think, uh, and it really did make me value the small towns in Iowa. Honestly, I mean, I can you know go. 10 minutes in any direction and being like be alone in in the in the cornfields you know that's true hey all right so listen i know we got a couple uh, unboxings right we got some things to show off here what do you got what does he got i don't know uh, well you said you got some unboxings too well, oh i already showed it it was the thanksgiving uh, hat oh okay well i thought that was cool as hell i still want to see that movie heard it's really really good oh it's fantastic i have i have, I have a screen use mask upstairs too Oh, nice, nice, spoiled. A screen use oh, mask. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, I do. A, a good you son of, of a man. gun. I'm Are actually working on a Nike too. Okay, 3D oh, render of the of the the knife used in that movie. Oh, on Thanksgiving. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, folks. Not only does he make costumes, but he also does props. Props, and then I'm doing a figure too. Oh yeah, figures. You, I, I I saw you mention figures. Tell me about the figures, huh? Oh crap! Okay, yeah, uh, I'm working on a diorama of the hedge scene from the original '78, uh, and then I essentially, you know, translated my full size '78, um, 1978 Halloween coveralls down to a one six, you know, twelve inch scale, uh, and yeah, they're pretty. I don't, I'm trying to think if I have any right here. Oh, uh, good. Oh, I got. Well, here's one that I'm in the weathering process, but yeah, oh. I mean, they're adorable. Oh, you forget. It's not, you just it's not, not really my niche, you know. I'm more of masks and props, but uh, I've just been asked uh, tons of times to recreate them in that scale. So before we get the John unboxing here, if folks want to get a hold of you and Creepy Customs, where do they go? Uh, Instagram. Um, there's a link there to uh, my online store. I am on Etsy a little bit. Uh, Facebook, you know. Uh, creepy creepy customs at gmail if you want to reach out and place an order that way uh for all the social medias you should be able to find me well listen man i, I i'm very proud of you thank um, you i just thank think you. i just you helped you're, me you're, well i didn't do much listen I, I i i just we me and john we love to showcase people that are that are doing well that are up and coming that are yeah. and you are far you are past the up and coming now and now you're pet you know you're blazing a trail of glory on your own. And I think uh, over the next couple of years, you might even be doing a creepy customs. You know, Iowa, Iowa could use a big con. That Iowa could true. use something. So something we can put our heads together and think about later on. All right, John, before our next two guests, let's see what you got there. All right. Well, uh, my buddy Lonnie McCollum, he's, it was supposed to be here for Chicago. It just didn't get here on time. It was supposed to arrive Wednesday, which I left Thursday morning. Uh, so Lonnie McCollum, he does a lot of Freddy's for me. He's done the Cenobites. He does the Pascal. He does the Gage. He does 
they said the Freddies and the Terminator. He's a talented artist. Talented yeah, sculptor. Amazing 3D printing. His wife does the printing. He does the painting. Amazing talent. So he sent me something, and I know you know this guy under here. I know you know him. You do? Oh, I know you know. Oh my gosh. Let's get the extra. Look at that. Robert Zadar. He wow. Wants to know the awesome. Maniac cop. You know, there's a few people out. Oh, that's great. Yeah, is that, that, is that Maniac too? I, I'm guessing it probably is because you barely saw his face in part yeah. one. A little more that, is, part that is definitely part two. Um, that's amazing. That's great. Um well, maybe Connor, that might be your next thing. Maybe we need to get some Maniac Cop uh, outfits together. I'm sure that I could source some, you know, vintage cop outfits. That I just gotta dig deep, you know, figure out what they are. Listen, my friend, we really appreciate you coming on. I know we could have you having spend, me. We could spend three or four hours with you. We'll get you on again and we'll chat. And I will definitely see you in Chicago. And hopefully uh, we'll we'll talk to Brandon and Adrian to see if we can quickly get you see if That'd we can great. get you to that Scarefest weekend because it's definitely is as I said Horror Hound's a big deal. In fact, um, I think Adrian was at Horror Hound uh, visiting. She was she was Brandon was over um, in Chicago and Adrian was over at over there at Horror Hound. I we think should... I had the biggest booth. So if if they went from the vendor room to the autograph room, they saw me. Yeah, you got a great booth. You have a great setup. It's it's pretty amazing. We're proud of you. Thank you so much for coming on. And um, we'll okay, holler you soon, my friend. Yeah, I'll take Creepy care. Thanks for having me. Stay safe. Stay spooky. Peace out. Later, Thank guys. You, Look at that. Connor Patrick. Yes. Now we got a couple guys uh, coming on. Yeah. Doing something pretty new, unique, and something I know you love and something I love. Yeah, we love haunts. We, we, we love uh, we love new stuff, man. And I'm pretty excited that, uh, you know, I saw this thing being advertised, Haunt Mare Expo. Actually, you know who talked? My buddy Daniel Brown, who does a few things, works for a few cons, hit me up and said, do you know these guys? There's, there's a new thing in Fresno. And I said, no. And so he put me in put me in, in touch with these guys and you know, there's not uh, there's I, 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 I almost went and played football at Fresno state when I was uh, coming out of high school. It was a place I looked at. Otherwise you just drive through Fresno. I, I, I don't really hang out there much. I've only been there a couple of times in my lifetime. So these guys said, you know what, we're going to put our own thing on called haunt mayor expo in Fresno. So they have a, they're pretty cool, so let's bring them on and let's chat about it and see what's going on with Hot Mare Expo. Sounds good to me. <laughs> Here they are. Hey. Oh, Hello. Oh, no yeah. big introductory music or nothing, huh? Just no, uh, you guys, wait a minute. I didn't know you were going to be together. Surprise. <laughs> so we have ladies. And Go ahead. Sorry, John. Oh, you're good. We just grind. We got Luther Riddle on the right. How you doing, Luther? Pretty good, pretty good. Look at that hair. Hair's on point. And then we got Dino Garcia. How are you, Dino? Brett, doing great. John, hello. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Pleasure having you guys on. John, if you can look in the background. I see, and you you see all. Eyes. I love it. I love it. <laughs> the collection. Yes. Some yeah. of it. Yeah. Yeah, oh, Luther, uh, we were chatting a little bit before, and he was showing me all. He is a huge, I mean, um, Maybe huge isn't even the right word, but he's a huge um, killer clowns from outer space fan, and he's got some good stuff. If you if you that. consider that I've pretty much gotten all this stuff within the last two years, then then yeah, then it'd be a pretty huge huge well, fan the of it. Is real in that kind of stuff. Trust me, I know all about yeah. it. I'm, I'm like yeah. that too. It's it's insane, and it grows quickly, especially when you you're really into it. And you're really excited about it and you meet these people doing amazing i'll take it i'll take it i'll take it and then you got right. that behind you yeah it's quite the quite the display you can't even really see all of it very well but there's yeah, yeah, there's a lot here on the solo screen let's take a look at it do what i can put you on a soil a solo screen so let me figure out how to do oh, that sure. let me... oh. 
Holy smokes. <laughs> it's all you guys. He, he backed out. He's Dino's like, oh, I'm back. No, I'll, I'll pull <laughs> out. Really right here. Here. It's like, damn, don't put my face so close. But that's cool. Right, There's gremlins. She's looking sexy. Yeah, that's like that's sexy logo. That's our that's Haunt Mare right there. That's our guy, Grims. That's oh, custom nice. made. That's that's He's, killer. So that's that figure's actually that's gonna be your little logo character, your your yeah. your thing. I like it. I like it, man. That's a cool looking yeah. uh wow. That's a it collection. Just keeps going. I'm envious. <laughs> I'm envious. Now two guests, Connor had his stuff all in the back, and here you guys with all this sickness. Yeah, how play. Wow. Yeah, it, it doesn't room. end, and it's all the way around. And there's still, I still don't have enough room for everything I have. I know that feeling, <laughs> but it's sick. <laughs> amazing, amazing, amazing uh, room. I know that's a room you just like to sit in and just go, ah, yeah, all the time. <laughs> I know the feeling. It's a very nice. enjoyable. Like uh, behind me, oh, I'll get you guys off a of solo. Uh, that way you, you don't feel, here we are again. <laughs> We returned, but yeah, so, I, mean, I lost weight. There we go. Down. Yeah, you're like, man, that was great. I got to have that. Either that, or you got to go on naked and afraid, and you'll lose thirty pounds in twenty-one days. Or just so, face Crips table. Yeah, I mean, I had a friend. I had a friend on that show. Oh, yeah. well, uh, you know. So my buddy Daniel Brown put, said, "Hey, you got to go check out these guys," and uh, I started looking up Haunt Mare Expo. Fresno of all places There's really, I mean, you would have to go to Sacramento where there is a con uh, that's been going on for a little bit. You'd have to go come down this way. Nothing in Fresno and Fresno is a pretty big city. I mean, people go Fresno. I'm like, it, there's people there. So talk about uh, why we're doing Fresno and what about Fresno? I mean, you guys have been out in that area a long time, right? I mean, Dino has been here his whole life, but well, me, I was, I've only driven up and down 99 kind of, passing by fresno as well um the opportunity came a few years back to move here and i i was blown away on how like ginormous fresno is in comparison to modesto which is where i lived and how small that was so but here's your uh here's your fresny fresnian born and raised yeah born here <laughs> raised here went to college in la for a while and then came back to fresno so enjoy it here you know there's so many possibilities growing towns are growing this, fresno is growing so fast it's people don't can't believe how quickly we're growing here i mean a lot of the bay area people are moving here now because it's cheaper to live in fresno and then commute to uh, san francisco you know so i mean the housing here is a lot cheaper than san francisco but you can get bigger houses and so on around here so yeah, it's it's becoming a big community here. So, bringing in a haunt, a, a, a Halloween horror convention here has not never been done before, and bringing it here. I know Fresno has a lot of horror fans and so on, and I I do a, a charity haunted haunted house here in Fresno. So I hear people talking about it all the time. How come Fresno doesn't have a Halloween or a horror convention, and after going to Trans World, I mean, I, I, I basically started off at Scare LA was my first Halloween horror. Oh wow, convention. yeah, yeah. Scare LA, and I mean, I went there twice. I think the last year was uh, 2017 was their last one they had, which was pretty amazing event. But I mean, from the going to the the Monster Paloozas, the Midsummer Screams, and so on, there. Are, and they're all based in LA, so it's kind of a a hard drive for a lot of people, you know. It's sure. It's, I, I mean, it, it takes yeah, a and few I know good uh, in an area, Brett, like what they're doing, like Fresno, a few good air, uh, events in the area. It's going to bring a lot of people, and it's going to help the whole town and the community as well. Like you said, a lot of people are finding out that Fresno might be a better alternative than some of these more expensive cities. And you guys could be a big part of uh, leaving your footprint on that, that road. Correct. And that's yeah. what we're kind of wanting to do is bring this event. I mean, like I said, I, I kind of thought of this event while flying back from trans world. And I was like, you know what, I'm going to do that. So I presented that to Luther 
after he I presented what what I wanted to do in Fresno and what we can possibly bring here and it would be a big event because again so many people never been to one of these events before and bringing this here I I brought it to Luther I know Luther with his Comic Con that he could help me and sure enough the next day he calls me he's like I'm in let's do it and. <laughs> Now here we are. It went something kind of like that. <laughs> well, yeah, there's other stuff into that. But. <laughs> One of my favorite things is seeing somebody experience a con for the first time. Like I've watched my family do it: my parents, my mother, my sisters, my nieces, and it's just such a great thing to witness somebody enjoying it that's never really done something like that. And I haven't seen anybody complain yet, so. I know you guys know that look too. That somebody oh, yeah. first there and they'll sit well, there. And I had it. it. <laughs> yeah, I had that same look. I was like, oh my god! The first time I went to the Scarlet, I was blown away. You know, I mean, I've never experienced something like that before, and I and it, it kind of left an impression in me. So, yeah. bringing this here is kind of a homage to Scarlet, I guess, huh? I do have to get to Transworld though. That's in St. Louis. I'm I'm in Kansas City. It's still a long drive, Kansas City, St. Louis. But I've heard so many good things about. It. I know Evil Jay's creepy closet goes there every year. So it's one I'm going to definitely be checking out. So you guys yeah, be definitely check out. You must check that one out. Out of all the shows of them all, I'd say Transworld is amazing. I'm you're a kid in in a toy store. Seriously. I was running around everywhere. My wife couldn't stop me. She's like, stop, ah, stop I've running. Seen, like, I like to take, you know, I like to think I put on some good tables, but I've seen some of the stuff that goes on at, at Trans World, and it's like, I don't know. These guys, I mean, some of the stuff in, in, that these creators and artists do at Trans World just blows my mind. I, I don't know if I could fit in as a vendor, but i definitely love to go and spend the weekend and check it out. Yeah, they, I mean, that's, they definitely that's, go above and beyond on those things more than oh, yeah. uh, you know. I I was going for to for, to all these comic book conventions for years, and they're nothing in comparison with the displays and everything that are put on at the uh, at the Halloween ones. Like they're just they're just phenomenal, and I I like that more than anything. It it's definitely nicer to go to these to the Halloween ones than it is to just a regular Comic Con. It's not the same feeling at all. Yeah, I mean, you were I, we were talking about a Luther, and you showed me a few pictures, but uh, you were doing some cosplay. Yeah, as as Thor. Yeah, as as <laughs> I know, like to say, ninety pounds ago. Yes, <laughs> in a loincloth. In a loincloth. No, not in a loincloth. <laughs> oh, I didn't send you those <laughs> photos. <laughs> <laughs> but you 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 know you've you've been into this thing. You were hitting the comic cons, and and uh, Dino was hitting a lot of the horror movie conventions and the horror conventions. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, yeah, as you said, there, it's it's a great opportunity because if you look at Creep IE which is in the Inland Empire, which is about a, two hours away from L.A. Nobody Don't thought, because all it? those people. Yeah. Oh. It's Creep IE. Yeah. Creep. You can I say Creep IE. That's what yeah. I call it. It's Creepy. All right. But it's Creep IE because it, it's, it's I. Inland Empire. But people okay. would drive in from Orange County, from San Diego, from way east, from the Inland Empire. They would come in to go to... Um, you know, uh, Monster Palooza, and they would come in to go to Scare LA, and they would come in for some of the other conventions. But those guys said, you know, hey, man, we got all these people right here. Why don't we keep them here? You know, so that's the same thing that you guys are doing. Look at people in Fresno are, are going to, um, it's going to be great. I, I'm, I'm excited for you guys. Plus, I'm excited that somehow I con my way into being a guest with you. So let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about what you have planned for the folks, because this is not just a a convention where you're going to have vendors and everything. It's actually, you got some, you got the haunted house vibe going on and there's going to be for the folks coming in, there's going to be a couple different things they can do besides just come see the guests and, and check out some vendors. Yeah. We, well, so um, with the layout of Fres, uh, the Fresno fairgrounds, it's actually multiple buildings uh, that we have and they're all right next to each other. So we have three of these buildings that are roughly, 20,000 square feet a piece. So we're looking at wow. 60,000 square feet in total or somewhere near that, you know, give or take a couple thousand there. 
Uh, but the biggest building is close to 20,000 square feet, and we're calling that, that is our uh, Nightmare's Crypt. Uh, we will have, it'll be shrouded in almost complete darkness. You know, you got to have some light because legal reasons, people got to see where they're walking. So there'll be a little bit of light. Uh, we'll have five haunted houses in that section alone. Wow. And uh, some other vendors you know it's a great spot for like people that are selling products that are you know black light or anything like that and they can they can really highlight those type of items in yeah. that area like the lightsaber i think we have a guy oh, coming yeah, in guy, yeah. with lightsabers uh, he goes to comic cons but these are actually dueling lightsabers you can actually duel somebody with these lightsabers so that would like fit perfectly in this dark zone you know where he can show the that it lights up like a lightsaber and so on. So, I mean, there's, there's going to be some pretty good haunts in that area and some pretty good, interesting vendors in there from black light. Like we said, a lot of them will have like the tea lamps to light up their, their booths and so on. But we have like five haunts, like you said, coming in. And I mean, it's not just all Fresno. We try to bring in different ones in these haunts into Fresno. So other people or people are, in town or maybe somebody that lives in their town goes, Hey, didn't we see this in Fresno? Let's go check them out. So we're kind of like publicizing different haunts for, for like the community going, okay, there's, yeah, we have these two here or we have, have these other ones here. Let's go check them out. You know? So it's not always, we want to, we want to spread the love the, of, of, of the haunt industry. And that's what yeah, more flies with honey. You know, I, you know, one thing I noticed about even Scarefest, I'll use them as an example. They go and they support so many cons, Frank and Con, they're big in, and they go and it, it pays off in dividends rather than having issues with other cons or other haunts. So the fact that you guys are doing, I think you're in the, you're taking the right step to that. I, I think that's important in the horror community. We're here to bring people together. I know you guys are putting that haunt together to bring the community together and celebrate and do some cool things. And I got to touch on the black light. Michael Toth, Doomsday's Crypt artist. We're big into black lights, as Brett will tell you. We love Thank Michael you. B. Light. He doesn't even ask anymore. You want black light? Of course, I want black light. So I love that you guys are going to be using a lot of that. Yeah, he will. Uh, he will make skateboards for me and John. And uh, John, you should throw a couple of those skateboards up and show the guys what he does. Early, I was trying to pull up the Facebook thing earlier, like when Connor was on, and it was just not showing it. But I will be showing that you can check out the posts. I know some people on Facebook saw I got you. Oh, you Yeah, got I them. saw it earlier. They, they were pretty amazing boards. You know, I'm, I was like, whoa, these are, I, I didn't know where you got them from or where, but I was pretty, I, My when you, uh, did, he did all the, you know, he does all the art for Doomsday's Crypt. Incredibly talented. Oh, hey, That's I just fine. bought, I just bought that guy. I just that. bought the uh, Super 7. Oh, Tom of him i just got it today too like an hour ago nice. yeah so he'll do sports for us and he does some you know texas chains he does everything. some texas chainsaw masker boards for me that i'll sign and sell but they look nice. great but this is all hand drawn with the black like pens you know so not only oh, do they look cool but they will light up man once you get a black light underneath these things they're amazing so like yeah, I said, it all sounds room, great. When I have the room set up, I'll have cutouts that are black light and all the uh, decks. And when you just turn on that black light and you sit back in your room, it's like, wow. Yeah, really I mean, cool. if you take a if you get a chance and see our logo, I think you were trying to put our logo in the in the thing here. But I, our was logo trying, actually, I was trying to find pictures. I got back from Chicago. I my brain wasn't even working. I'm like, I gotta set this room and I'm trying to remember <laughs> names like you. Like I couldn't right. absorb anything yesterday. I was so tired, and I had so to. So our back logo, there. our logo is a gremlin, and if you look at it, you'll see. Uh, well, he's that guy up there. He's uh, that, yeah, uh, the gremlin. You'll still he's notice he's, he's he's like a Frankenstein gremlin. Yeah. And what happens yeah. is he has patches of like uh, magenta, and and blue and stuff. And the and the purpose for that is because he eventually will we're gonna make him. He is gonna be a black light logo. Well, there's and that's why we have such bright colors. Michael, Tull. very cool. Now, um, what's been? Uh, I mean, you know, 
we've never tried to do something as big as what you guys are doing yet. I mean, me and John have some ideas and John's got a lot of ideas about putting on our own con, but what has been the toughest thing so far about putting this together? Or what's the easiest thing about it? Maybe it's not tough. Um, I think at least the hardest thing, I think the hardest thing for me is just keeping up on all the posts and, and trying to keep a consistency on that. Cause you're trying to play this game with an algorithm um and using hashtags and you just kind of have to keep up on that and if you the the more you consistently post the more possibility of your post being viewed you know as soon as you stop posting you kind of drop out of that algorithm so it's just yeah. playing that game really is yeah. it's just it's just keeping up on everything like anytime there's something new i gotta go and fix the website and it, it, it's just mainly that stuff i'll be up until you know one or two in the morning doing stuff and and adding new stuff and getting everything going. By the way, he's the computer guy. I'm the guy that that he's the pretty face. Yeah, I'm the one that goes talking. <laughs> but seriously, the hardest thing is bringing in the the vendors, the, the actual Halloween vendors, not just just the vendors near here. I'm talking about like the the bigger companies, uh, your your VFX, your your um. Let me see. What was the one that just declined? Uh, <laughs> I was like, oh, man. Nobody's ever declined. Immortal masks. I, I really want immortal masks. I would I would actually traded a spot for him and then gave him some cash just for them to come down here. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, uh, maybe I, I might have to go. Call, I might have to call him up. Well, if you throw out cash, I'll bring something. Just pay, pay the cash. I may have to come down there and go talk to the guys in immortal masks. I mean, yeah. I mean, listen, these are some of the folks you want to get in there. You want to get a trick or treat studios in there. You want to get a terror threads. You want to get fright rags. You want to get these folks in there because people love vendors, right? I mean, that's, it's, if you don't have good vendors when you're trying to put on a convention, people, you know, they'll go see all the celebrities you got. They'll go eat the food, but they really, I mean, the vendors are a big part of it, you know? So anything yeah, we can you know, yeah, the big name vendors. They want to see that those big name vendors, you know. Sure. And I mean, I mean, we got a great. We so far we got a pretty good list of vendors, but we don't have the the super ones that you go, oh yeah, I seen them on my my Facebook all the time, and and or I seen them at Trans World. So mm -hmm. we're we're trying hard, and and I'm I'm pretty sure we'll pull it out, and. I mean, this is our first year and so on. So they're probably looking back going, well, let's see what's what maybe next year we'll, we'll that's, come back. That's the biggest hurdle right there is uh, year one. Um, there's some, there's, who do we, um, oh, Andy, Andy, who played Andy and uh, Chucky? Oh, yeah. We tried to get oh, him, was very interested. Oh, and then he looked at our group the following and then he declined because we don't have the following uh, that, oh would support him to come out here. So our biggest hurdle is trying to really get through our first, first year. year and really trying to show the numbers on what we can produce. Uh, so let's if we talk can... about some of those guests. Let's talk about who you got so far, because I we mean, got a good list. You got a good list and it's not, it's not, so, you got some big people coming. You got some legit horror folks that are going to be there. So let's, let's talk about some of the people you got so far. Well, our 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 biggest one is uh, Brett Wagner. Yeah. So <laughs> I think we all heard about that guy. He's yeah, you know tops. he's. We, you've, I'm sure you sure you've heard of him before. Uh, Tony Moran, we're we're getting him. Uh, he would be the uh, the unmasked oh, yes, Myers. Michael yeah. Myers from the original Halloween movie. Matter of fact, that's another thing I just bought like an hour ago. Is the original Halloween movie on VHS tape. Oh, nice. You're going to have him sign it? I'm going to have him sign it. Oh, nice. So, he just had his girlfriend on Auntie Ann Ritter, the bathroom girl. I didn't realize they were together, but she was telling me that Tony Rance and her are a boyfriend and girlfriend. So, and I, I didn't know if I'd see I'm going to be catching up with my wife. Where's that in this right now? <laughs> there you go. Maybe. I didn't even know that. There is the next matchmaker right there. You know, rekindle some old flames. There you go. I don't know. I told you, you, know, you I, well, you know, I mean, it might be an interesting guest. She's a lot of fun. I mean, we had her on. She's a. They sound a like it. As soon as, as soon as we posted um, about them, they kind of, they just kind of went nuts on that a little bit with the, with their commenting and, and talking back and forth onto the, 
on our Instagram and stuff. Like these really sound like some fun people. We can't wait to meet them. Yeah, the girls, uh, the bathroom girls, as they are called, have been on, uh, been consistently hitting up a lot of the cons the last couple of years, and they're big fan favorites. And they, they, uh, they're good at a convention, and the, and all the fans like them, so that's good. So Tony Moran, you got, you got a Michael Myers, you got a Leatherface, you got some Scream folks, but let's mm -hmm. not forget about the face-off folks. They're going to be there. So yeah, that was that was next who I'm going to hit on here, uh, Connor. Mikola, I think I'm pronouncing his name correctly. Uh, he would be the season one winner of uh, Sci-Fi's Face Off. And then we're having uh, Rashad Santiago, which is actually a buddy of mine since he was a guest at a um, at a convention down in L.A. And I was also a guest as well. So we kind of uh, we ended up rooming together. So that's how I became friends with him. But he's the season six winner of Face Off. And then we also have Nora Hewitt Gervidge, which I think is how you pronounce that. She she's the season nine winner of Face Off. So we're having all three of them. And then that's always the, a lot of fun. You get those math oh, uh, balance. Then we have one indie. We have a girl from an indie. She played in um, Clown Motel Two. Kelsey Livermore. Livermore. I think, I think, you, I think you were correct. Oh, her Living name's Mischief in it. So. <laughs> or something like that. Yeah. So yeah. now you're going to. Let's make yeah, sure. Clown Motel I enjoyed the first one. I haven't seen the second one yet. So that's. Kelsey I, I Living Good. Living Good. Kelsey Living Good. Mischief is oh. her, her name. Livermore, Liver Good. Uh, no, Living Good. That's great. <laughs> we yeah. had it. Yeah. <laughs> We're close that enough. Clown Motel close wasn't enough. bad. I haven't seen part two, but now give me give me something to look at. Um, are I there any are there any guests uh, any guests that you you're wanting to, uh, right now that maybe we could throw in a good word for? Who who would you want to come that you you still might be working on? Who do we need to put in the good word for? Tony okay. Savini. Who's that? Tom Savini. Tom Savini. Tom Savini. Tom, Savini. Tom, Tom, sorry, Tom Savini. Yeah, uh, Tony Moran yeah, on your mind. But apparently you're not either. Oh, what's that? Who is this now? Tom Savini? Man. Can I, can somebody slap this guy? <laughs> hey, Tom Savini. Made I've made mistakes. At, I, I mean, believe me, I'm, I'm, I'll am i spit out things and I'll even watch it. It's like he just oh. called Michael Myers Jason. You know, like, I'm not thinking. Just talking and then oh yeah, Jason Par five. No, you talking Halloween five, dummy. <laughs> you got the Nick 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 uh a Nick Cage mask, you know, that's what they call the Halloween five anyway. It does look like names. Tom Savini would be a, a hell of a guest. That what's 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 planned for year two. Yeah, exactly. You know? <laughs> Trust me, I but that if you would... ever need some good year one guests, I know me and Brett know quite a few people that would would be great for you. So you know, send them away. Send them. Yeah, away. yeah. We we'd we'll always we want we want to give the people something oh, that they talk about. The bullet penis thing. Yes, the guy. bullet gun. Yeah, the the penis <laughs> gun guy. Yes. <laughs> there we go. Yes, dust the dawn. That is yes. <laughs> I forgot dust till dawn. The That's bullet penis I guy. Because I was like ten or eleven years old, and I watched that movie in theaters. Matter of fact. I was told, I was brought to the theaters to watch a movie. I'm like, what are we watching? And they're like, it's a vampire movie. And like, we're halfway through the movie and I was pissed off. I'm like, I was lied to. This is not a vampire movie. Because it took a long time to get to the point of it being an actual vampire movie. But that I, that was a very, very memorable time in childhood watching that. Oh, the first one's great. Uh, Robert Patrick, a buddy of mine and, and a friend of our shows, is he was in... Uh... Dust Till Dawn 2 did a great job. And then, uh, you know, it was uh, quite the, a fun uh, a fun uh, franchise. All right. So people are asking in the chat room. They're like, uh, for I both of you. Guys, I, know what, what, I know what Lords is. I mean, just look behind the man. But I, I, I mean, I put money on one of two things that are his favorite. Luther, oh, your favorite God. scary movie. Um. Current or older? Doesn't I'm matter. Gonna pick, I'm not going to pick Killer Clowns because that's more of comedy horror. But I think, uh, honestly, I feel like Bride of Chucky. And 
you know, comedy horror right there. You, went from, you went from comedy horror to comedy horror. <laughs> so is that, yeah, it is comedy <laughs> horror, isn't it? Damn it. Uh, I really like comedy horror. It's really like my my top thing. But I mean, I'm I'm a huge Freddy fan as well. So Robert England would be an amazing guest for me. That would yeah. be like like the cream of the crop right there, I think. Be ready to pull out that wallet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, well, that wallet needs a little, a few years yeah. to uh, collect. But, yeah, but it's, it's, it's oh, not unattainable, though. No. So that's, that's not no, unattainable. Yeah. No. It's definitely reasonable. And then if you know you got the numbers bringing in somebody like Robert Englund, you know, even though he's going to be expensive, he's going to yeah. bring in people. You're going to get oh, people there. You know, there's no way people aren't going to go. Um, have we seen Terra Tune 4? I had the link and it wasn't working. We had Joe Castro on who worked on that film. I, and I'm a big fan of Joe Castro's work. That guy's SFX stuff is unreal. The stuff that he's shown and that he, he posts is next level. Great guy. But I do want to watch Terra Tune 4. Now that it's on Amazon Prime, I'm going to watch it. I wanted to order the Blu-rays, but... I'm on the road so much. I don't have any room to put my physical media anymore. Yeah, we love uh, we love Joe and Terra Tune. Terra Tune, Terra Tune, the whole franchise is great. Now, Dino, <laughs> uh, your favorite horror movie. Now, listen, I understand that secretly, sometimes, middle of the night, three in the morning, you dress up as uh, David Howard Thornton and you're cruising around Fresno, causing mischief, doing beer runs. Yeah, yeah, I've had the <laughs> cops called on me a couple times. But yes, Terrifier. <laughs> I love the Terrifier. I mean, I love the older movies. I, I was gr raised up. I mean, the, A Stranger is Calling scared me as a kid. Wow, um, very nice. Good movie. You know, um, what really scared me was uh, was the Nightmare on Elm Street because um, when I watched it, uh, we were in the middle of the country. The house had no houses around it. It was me, my mom, and her sisters. So I was the only boy there. I was like, who's going to protect us if Freddie comes? And now that you got stuck like, with that job if Freddie came. Yeah, I, I was already dead. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I didn't sleep that whole night. I'm sorry. I did not sleep when There's I had <laughs> nothing more terrifying as a child than the Freddie movies because oh, after terrifying. you're done watching it, you know you can't go to sleep. Like that's it. You just you know you're not you can't go to sleep. And I just the scratch is the metal greatest. Just, you know, haunt you. Yeah, but the terrifier. I I, I fell yeah. in love with that movie. That's just an amazing movie. What right they've there. done, what, what they've gore. done in modern times to stand out and uh, being an independent, really an independent movie to start. I think the first one had three uh, thirty thousand for a budget right around there. We had Steve Barton on. I think. The second only had like a quarter million and for a, a big budget movie. And the fact that they were able to get it in the movie theater and then have it continue to stay in the movie theater at, long after planned, I thought was uh, really amazing what they were able to accomplish with that. And Damien yeah, Leo, yeah, amazing. Yeah, especially coming from that, that what was it, an hour movie, the Halloween? Halloween movie All did. Hallows Eve. Yeah, all Hollows Eve. There we go. Mm -hmm. From that, mm -hmm. just making a movie from just that. It just was like, whoa. <laughs> even I mean, we're, even we're, we're excited for part three coming out. You know, obviously they oh, got yeah. a bigger budget and it's going to be, uh, I mean, you know, they, they may get a few more movies out of this franchise, but part three is going to be great. And then I'm, I'm excited to see what Damien and David, you know, if they continue working together on other projects, because, I mean, um, the director's got a great, wild, wicked mind. Very nice guy, too, if you ever go to a convention to meet him. And Dave, I, I got to sit next to David Howard Thornton when I was in... I don't even know where I was, but it was nice. Well, I, I forget what, what, what state well, we were well, in. I had the, the final girl next to me in Minnesota at Crypticon. Oh, yeah. She that room out, and she was super cool, one of the nicest people. And I've met David at Scarefest. I met him at Kansas City uh, Comic-Con. I didn't see him that long there, but, you know, him and Beatrice are in a movie together, uh, The Dead Place, that's coming up by Michael Pickle. So got to meet David. I'm a big fan of uh, Damien Leone. I didn't really get a chance to talk to him, but him as a director, writer, and his SFX skills is is incredible. And that's the only way they were able to pull it off, you know, with the cast that they had and the good people 
like Steve Barton as a producer. So, um, yeah, just amazing team. So I'm with you. Terrifier is probably my most favorite modern day movie. I am a 78 Halloween fan because that's the movie that scared the shit out of me as a kid. So, uh, but yeah. I'm a, I'm a 78 Dawn of the Dead guy. So, mm -hmm. I mean, Dawn of the Dead is still my favorite movie, that's but, uh, you know, I, we love we love the whole genre. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm, I speak. I love children shouldn't play with dead things, yeah. which is a very campy, very. Yeah. You should get that on VHS there, Luther. Watch one. But now? listen, folks, Hot Mare Expo Fresno. Let's give them the date. August seventeenth and eighteenth, two thousand twenty-four, at the Fresno Fairgrounds, Fresno. And that is the big location. And they're going to have five different haunted houses in there for you. They're going to have vendors. They're bringing in some good celebrities, and we're not done with the celebrities, right? We're still working to see if what we yeah, can bring, what else we can bring. We have escape rooms, rage room. If you're, if you get mad at somebody, you, you could go into this trailer, break anything you want, and then come out, get your rage out. Yep. What? Yeah. Yep. Right. I oh, might yeah. get in there. Just oh, yeah, man, to fly out for that. I feel getting there with some innocent people. You do not want that man in a yeah. room. <laughs> If folks wanna, if folks wanna see it, be a part of it, where can they go and sign up and see what's going on? Hauntmare.com. 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 Or hauntmareexpo.com. Either yeah. one, it'll take you to the same place. Yeah. Hauntmareexpo.com. We appreciate you guys coming on. I'm excited to come out there for you. And remember, you set up those radio interviews. I will bang them out. We'll let the folks know. Well, I, I'm obviously, obviously sharing in every Texas Chainsaw Massacre room there is on right. Facebook and Instagram. So I will do my part. Make sure I'll talk to the girls, but let's make sure we get some videos from the girls and Tony talking about how they're going to be there. And if they don't, you tell me and I'll make sure they do it. Yeah. Uh, because we want to get everybody knowing that those folks are coming and anything we can do for you too, to, to help out and then make this journey easier and uh and help you out we will do it of course because uh you know we love guys like you that love the business and trying to give back and do something positive and do something positive uh, in their community and i almost played football at fresno state for god's sake so i'm excited to get back there All you right. missed out you missed out but a great time I but did. yeah thank you very much you reached out to us that helped us out a lot and I know you'll help us out more because, and you're you're the friendly type because we've had some shady characters wanting to help, but they wanted half of what we made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't need to do that. No, there, there's no. plenty of there's plenty of listen. There's plenty of folks that'll they'll help you out and do things, and then yeah. But we're we're all used to shady people. We know how to get rid of those people. So. Yes, yes, not yeah. like bury them, but we, we can just we know how to push them to this. Well, we know how to bury them too, but we'll we'll talk about that. What do we find? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, listen, folks, it's going down August seventeenth, seventeenth and eighteenth at Fresno yeah, so, Fairgrounds, Fresno, California. Hotmareexpo.com. Uh, thanks for coming on, John. What do we got coming up? What do you got coming up? Oh, uh, well, I got a. Uh, not this week. Next week, I'll be seeing uh, a couple leather faces in That's Michigan, right. California. And We're going to be at Rated Comics uh, in uh, Palm Springs. Me and Mark Burnham from uh, Mark from the 2020 version of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yep. We're going to be listen, boys. Going to be signing in Palm Springs uh, April 7th. If you're if you're bored and want to drive out and come say hello, I don't know how far Palm Springs is from Fresno. Sounds like it might be far. Yeah, mm. sounds like a desert there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, we appreciate you, folks. Uh, I'm sure we'll be back on next week. Do you got something coming up with Beatrice? Uh, we are going to be getting a show together. I haven't even had a chance to organize. But the other thing I got going on, we got going on. We got two things this month. We got Michael Bailey Smith's wedding coming up. That's right. Michael Bailey Smith. There's another guy you guys can get for a guest possibly in the future from uh, the I Hills know. Have Eyes remakes. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Awesome. Super Ooh. Freddy. Yep, Super Freddy, bloodiest beatdown winner. Michael <laughs> Bailey, great guy. That's Every right. And then the con run starts, man. Carolina Fear Fest, the Crypticons booked. I mean, we got a lot going on. I'm 
still working on some for November. I mean, we're going to be busy. I think the only month I don't have something up till November lined up is August. That's the only one. So I will. We'll figure maybe something out. Maybe you might have to fly up for Hunt Mare Expo. And I, I might if I can get a ticket and get out there and maybe hang out yeah. and come see you guys. Bring Debbie, make nice. her uh, drive around. <laughs> but, um, yeah, guys, I, it's been great having you on. I'm excited for your first year. You guys got this. You're going to crush it. You got the DK and the swag support from us. You got Brett going to the show. So you can't fail with the big swag. It just doesn't awesome. happen. He doesn't allow it. <laughs> yeah, people we'll are see. excited. Yeah, we'll see if uh, – I'll, I'll make a few emails and messages to some of the killer clown guys and see if anybody's around that weekend and see if they're – Yeah, we did talk if they're about inter- that. It, it would be nice to get a killer clown there as well. All right, guys, hotmareexpo.com, hotmare.com. We appreciate you, John. I'll see you, uh, so- I'll see you next weekend. Yeah, yep. Yep, we'll play. We got a show, I'm sure, coming up. We want to start cranking even more shows and getting with this con run coming. Me and Brett are really ready to kick it up another notch and really bring even more to you guys. So check us filming, out. Filming next month, Skate to Hell with Sean C. Phillips, Lee Waddell, Doug Tate, uh, Nicole Vegas producer. So many people, Eric Roberts. I can't even, there's so many people in this movie. But it's it's going to be fun. I just got the script, so I'm going over that and trying to figure yeah, out. I don't want to think about all the the, the uh, legends they got coming for that movie. They got a lot going into that film. And- they got a lot going into that movie, so I'm pretty excited about it. All right, guys, uh, appreciate you coming on, folks. All right, John. Tuesday's crypt. We'll see Brett, you soon. Thank you. thank you, guys. You guys are awesome. Thank you. Thank you.